And the FDA has approved a groundbreaking treatment for obesity. An existing diabetes drug can now be administered at a higher dose for use with patients struggling with chronic obesity. I want to bring in ABC News medical contributor and emergency medical physician, Dr. Darian Sutton, for more on this and the latest on the pandemic. Dr. Sutton, thanks for being here. I want to start with this Thank new you. treatment. How significant is this and how does it work? Well, this is incredibly important news in the world of obesity medicine. Uh, this medication, which is commonly known as semaglutide, it works by suppressing appetite. And what have studies have shown is that it can uh, decrease uh, or, or contribute to weight loss by as much as 10 to 15 percent and as high as 20 percent in study participants. So it is incredibly important news because it adds to only a few of available medications in the treatment of obesity. And when will it be available? And is, are there any limits on who will be able to get this treatment? So it's currently available because it's currently in use for treatment of diabetes at different doses. Um, and as well, as far as availability and accessibility, that's a little bit of an issue. It's indicated for patients with a BMI over 30 or those under 30 with an obesity-related health condition. But unfortunately, it might not be accessible to all as it will likely be expensive, but the price has yet to be determined. Got it. And I also want to ask you about the pandemic, because nearly half of all eligible Americans are now fully vaccinated against COVID-19, everyone 12 and over. But the pace of new vaccinations is slowing. We're now averaging less than 1 million shots per day, down from 3.3 million in April. So where do you think that puts us in terms of reaching herd immunity? So it, it lengthens our trajectory. When we look at our timeline in terms of when we can achieve that 70% vaccine-induced herd immunity, initially earlier on in the pandemic when we were vaccinating 2 to 3 million people per day, we were hoping to see that number obtained in July or August, but now trajectories are pushing it to September and October, and so that's really unfortunate, as especially those who are young and healthy are presumably more hesitant to get the vaccine, and it's understandable, but the risk is not zero, and I'm trying to help my patients understand that COVID-19 is still very much a risk as this pandemic is ongoing. So I'm hopeful that more and more people continue to participate in vaccine use. All right, Dr. Darian Sutton, great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.